the New Madrid earthquakes occurred in from uh, December 1811 till February 1812 with aftershocks being felt in the area throughout the year of 1812. We have an eyewitness account for the New Madrid area basically from November, December of 1812 saying that the ground is still shaking here. We felt several thousand shocks of the ground. They call them shocks or quakes or jolts or whatever like that but that the ground past the main earthquakes themselves were constantly vibrating for a while by their standards. When you were eyewitness on the river, basically the effects were such that you thought you were, you were seeing the end of the world. Uh, Pierce noted that the, the river would boil, sand blows would erupt on the shore, the trees would shake together and clash, trees would snap, the wildlife, waterfowl would fly aimlessly up in the air because they were scared to land on the ground, etc., etc., etc. People passing the play, uh, little town of uh, Little Prairie, which is where modern day, roughly where Carothersville, Missouri is today, were, were, would beg people on boats to let them on uh, to, to get away from this area. Oh, a particular interesting account, John James Audubon, the naturalist, was in Kentucky riding a horse during one of the earthquakes and literally his horse sensed the earthquake before he did and stopped and a few seconds later the earthquake hit them. The animal felt the, the, the effect quicker than he did and stopped and then he, he was along for the ride literally at that point on the horse. At Cincinnati you had a, somebody by the name of Daniel Drake basically who uh, ba uh, set up his own crude instruments to try to record the effect, basically pendulums noting that they swayed back and forth, noting date, time, and how much the pendulum swayed kind of thing. Uh, there was a, a, a engineer at Louisville named Jared Brooks who left a long catalog of earthquakes who did the same thing, who noted this pendulum swayed or several of my pendulums swayed depending on the earthquake, date, time, and effect, that sort of thing. But what a lot of people noticed was that they would, their, their house would shake, the furniture would shake, water in a wasp, wash basin would slosh back and forth, your chimney would snap off, you would be rousted out of the house in the wee hours of the morning and run outside wondering what's going on and hear, you could hear the trees shake in the forest. You hear the limbs rattling and everything. You could see your cabin jumping around kind of thing. And you didn't know why because the last American earthquake of any magnitude was around 1755 in New England. So this was a totally, totally new experience for everybody involved. When an earthquake is felt in the central United States, they are felt for vast, vast distances. A couple of years ago, they had the Mount Carmel earthquake of southern Illinois, which was, I think, 5-2 on, on the uh, scale, if my memory serves me correct. And it was felt over at least a 10-state area. I personally felt it myself and uh, was awoken at 4.20 in the morning by it with, with a gentle shaking that felt like somebody was shaking me on the shoulder. And to give you some idea of the sense of scale of a New Madrid earthquake, that similar effect of being awoke from sleep was felt on the eastern coast of the United States. At Charleston, uh, when the December 16th earthquake happened, which was approximately 2.30 in the morning, depending on your time zone, the church bell in one of the steeples on one of the churches there rang for 10 seconds. A bell, bronze bell, not a substantial bronze bell, not a small bell, was swayed by an earthquake several hundred miles away and at Charleston, they didn't know what it was at first. Charleston left, uh, there were several good extensive records at Charleston, South Carolina from the newspapers where they recorded it and it was felt multiple times there. And, uh, the major earthquakes and some of the subsidiary earthquakes were felt quite well at Charleston, but that's at an enormous distance. Uh, same with Annapolis, Maryland, where basically they noted the State House steeple swayed several feet, and skaters out on the river there basically were scared by one of the earthquakes because the ice started breaking up underneath their feet. And they made a mad dash to shore because they were afraid the ice was going to break up while they were out there skating. At Washington, D.C., which was just being established, there's one account of plaster falling from a ceiling there. Uh, Philadelphia that was noted that the earthquakes were felt there. In central New York State there's an account for one of the earthquakes where people woke up and saw the kettle in their fireplace swaying back and forth by the light of the fire, by, by what limited light, basically because the kettle was acting as a pendulum being swayed by the earthquakes at enormous distance.
the sheer scale of it is is such. Uh, for instance, the map back of me here is shows Real Foot Lake done around 1820, and you'll notice the northwestern corner of Tennessee, basically on, along the river, is been turned into a swamp or wetland or lake or all of the above due to the force of the earthquakes. In East Arkansas, it was transformed from an area that was was of some utility, according to contemporary accounts, to being a wetland that wasn't drained until the 20th century. Uh, the, the scale of that kind of damage is very hard to imagine, even in the modern era. This was a totally, totally new experience for everybody involved. And it's one reason they recorded it. It was because basically it was such a new experience that they thought, I shall write this down, one, so I can remember it, and so that I have a written record so pe somebody may believe me. And, but that raw material generated by that uh, in essence, is what I use to, to do what I do in terms of studying it, because date, time, and effect reports are essential for hazard mapping purposes. Even if it's a log cabin in the wilderness, where that log cabin in the wilderness was is now probably a major city. If you have some idea where that log cabin in that wilderness was, was it on a hill, was it on alluvial soil, what kind of ground it was on, that helps. You get some idea what the ground effect was at that from a new Madrid earthquake because it was written down at the time. However, historic records being what they are, they're not perfect and they're not complete. There are big swaths of the United States where I'd dearly love to have information that I've not been able to find anything yet. Uh, where due to later events or uh, events during late, uh, later wars or whatever, any human activity, Records have been scattered or obscured to the point that they're not coming easy to find, so to speak. They're not, go they're not revealing themselves willingly. And those you have to uh, literally do detective work to find them again and backtrack what went on in that area to see where the records possibly have, have been deposited.